So tell me your name, sir. Jamie Prevo. All right, Mr. Prevo, where are you from? Salem, Alabama, on the south side. What high school did you attend and what year did you graduate from Selma? Southside High School. I graduated in 901. And tell me your uh, profession. What do you do for a uh, living? I work with Hania USA or then Tallis, Alabama. There's a supply coming for Hyundai and Kia. Gotcha. Tell me, what was life like growing up in Selma, Alabama, Mr. Prevo? It was uh, up and down. You know, we had a rough neighborhood. It was always negative energy. When then pause about it, a lot of drug dealing going on, crackheads, a lot of motivation for the dope boys. We seeing them living a good life, and we choose to take the wrong path because we want to follow them. Gotcha. So mentioning that following the wrong paths, was there ever time that you followed the wrong path and maybe did some things that you shouldn't have done? You know, there was a time when I had wanted to sell drugs when I ain't needed to do it, but I just wanted to get that fast money. And so there times I choose to try to sell drugs and I wasn't good at it. And then there were times that I went to places where I knew we were going to have beef with other guys because we was in the wrong neighborhood. But I wanted to go because I wanted to be a part of the crowd. Gotcha. So being a part of the crowd, that's what kind of motivated you to selling drugs and being into crime and stuff like that. Yeah. So when you did sell drugs, what was your drug of choice? What did you sell? It was crack cocaine. Gotcha. So tell us, you know, we know that crack cocaine has a good side. You can make money off of it, but we know, you know, people don't always look at the bad side. So tell us about some of the bad things to dealing with crack cocaine. Well, the first bad experience I had with crack cocaine, my dad, I seen him smoking crack one night. And that really got to me because I never thought a crackhead would be in my family. And then as time went on, a lot of people that I knew when I was growing up, they became crackhead. And I started seeing how the drug destroyed their family. Gotcha. So, you know, you said you seen it affect you and your family and other families, uh, but did it also affect you in any kind of way? Because you end up doing some time in the feds, right? Well, the way it affected me, I chose to keep selling drugs because I was chasing that money. And then when I thought I had came up in the game, a few people that were hustling for me, one of them caught a case. I made it bond. A year later, he told me the case was missed, but he was working with the feds. Gotcha. So what what kind of case did you catch? He was parked down the street and I went to the house and they had the DEA parked behind the club from the house and they made a control bow me for crack cocaine. Gotcha. So they got you for distribution? Yeah, distribution. Gotcha. How much time did you end up doing in the Fed? I had got a 10 year sentence. I did eight years, eight months, two weeks and three days on it. Gotcha. So how was it doing that bid in the Fed? It was stressful because I had three kids. My boy, they were twin, they were seven years old in second grade. And my little girl, she was two years old. I wasn't concerned about me doing the time. I was concerned I went at home with them. Cause my little boy, mama, she had sickle cell. Gotcha. Where'd you do most of your time? At UFP Atlanta in Atlanta, Georgia. Okay. So, you know, I know why you were locked up, you started writing. So what motivated you to start writing movie scripts? Well, I was very angry, mostly because of myself, because the people I chose to deal with, I shouldn't have dealt with them when I was in prison. And if I was in prison, I couldn't do nothing to them. And then, so when every time I get mad, I just go put my thoughts in writing. And then I found myself having fun writing because I can be wherever character I choose to be. And one day, an officer asked me, why you write so much? And I told her why I was writing. She read it, and she said, I like it. You need to keep doing it because it's a God gift. Gotcha. So write movies make you feel good. It made me feel good. I can choose to be wherever character I want to be. Gotcha. So I got a question for you. We're talking about that crack cocaine and, and you doing time. When was the first time that you saw cocaine cook the crack? I was around about 14 years old. I seen my dad and one of their homeboy. They were cooking crack in our kitchen. Okay. Do you regret, you know, selling drugs? I don't regret it. I just regret some of the things that I experienced from selling drugs. Bet. Tell me about your entertainment company. I know you have your own entertainment company. What's the name of the entertainment company? Blackwater Ambition Entertainment. Yeah. How'd you come up with that black name, Blackwater? When I was a kid, my mom used to always try to get me into the Bible. And she showed me a scene was saying this small country that got black water running through it, gonna go to war with the most powerful country, and the small country gonna win the war. 
And I asked her, I said, what is black water? She said, it's oil. And she said, oil is money, so them country gonna be at war by their money. And so when I was in prison, the thought just kept coming to me. And one night I was asleep, it hit me, I woke up, and then I just had a, like a vision of the black water running. And I said, my ambition is to get that black water, which is money. And so I said, I'm gonna name an entertainment company, Black Water Ambition. Gotcha, make a lot of sense. I like that concept. So I know, you know, this is uh, your, your second movie that you're writing, right? Yeah. The one that we're working on today. And I know you got a, your kids in there, you got a lot of your family and friends in there. So how does it feel to see your kids and everybody else that you know playing in movies that you actually wrote yourself? You know, I feel good about it because when I was locked up, I used to always think about my kids. And I said, when I get out, I want to do something that positive to keep them from walking the same path that I had walked. And when I talked to them about it, they were motivated. And then one of them told me he got a homeboy, he want to play in it. And for me to be able to do something positive and make the young generation want to follow my path, it made me feel real good about it. Gotcha. So tell me, uh, what's the meaning of this movie that we're writing, uh, recording today, Devil in Disguise? Well, Devil in Disguise, everybody going to play in their movie. They're going to come to you and they somebody as a friend. But at the end, while they're doing beating the witch, they're going to either rob and kill you for your drugs or they're going to set you up with the DEA. So the devil, he coming to you in the skies as your friend. All right. Well, I'm excited about shooting it today. And we thank you for coming in and chatting with us today, on, uh, today Mr. Prevo. I appreciate doing being with you, Koji. So what are you guys' names? Uh, my name is Jamie Prevo. And my name is Justin Prevo. How old are you guys? 18. 18. What city and state are you from? I'm from Selma, Alabama. I'm from Selma, Alabama. What age were you when your mom passed away? Uh -huh. I was 13 when my mama died. Where were you, where was your dad when your mom passed away? He's in federal prison. Federal prison? Who raised you guys when your mom, when you, excuse me, who raised you guys when your dad was in federal prison? My grandma. So how old were you when, you, when your dad got locked up? We said. How old were you when your dad was released from federal prison? 15. After your mom passed away while your dad was in prison, how did that make you feel? It kind of made me feel like I was in a dark place. But through the grace of God, by my twin being by my side, we ain't not getting through it. Jamie, tell me, how did it make you feel? I was fucked up, but like, you know, you had your day messed up in the head, like you don't want to be bothered, but like my brother said, I had him, so we got through it together, though. Gotcha. How did you guys feel when your dad was released from federal prison? I would have to be back with him. He in my life, and I'm in his life. I feel good about him back in my life. He was gone a long time, but we always kept in touch, so it felt good for him to be back at home, though. How do you feel about growing up in uh, Selma, Justin? Uh, I feel growing up in cell, it like a lot of high crime, violent gang, but my folk kept my head on the right track and get and got through it. What about you, Jamie? Same thing. Enormous, enormous teenage stuff in cell that go on, but you got a man to get through it though. You got to know how to maneuver through a lot of stuff. So we came out on top with it. We didn't get caught up in there. Gotcha. What are your future plans after high school, Justin? You know, my dad playing these movies and these short films, trying to pop off something with it. What about you, Justin? Yeah. What about you, Jamie? I don't want to get down with my dad, see what these films I'm talking about. I like them a lot, but if that don't work, anything happen, that don't work, I want to go to school, fuck a pre science or something. But I'm trying to see what the movies are going to take it. You guys uh, played in the movie Gangster Re Retaliation. Tell me, what are your thoughts about that movie? How do you feel about that, uh, Justin? It was good, though, because my daddy had wrote it, and all me and my homeboy, we played in it. I liked it. Gotcha. What about you, Jamie? Uh, I like it because it's based on a lot of real stuff that happened in this time, like people getting robbed for dope, your homeboy snitching on you. And there's a lot of, a lot of normal teenage stuff that go on themselves, so like we can relate to a lot of it. So we went in there and made for real. We like to play it. 
Jamie, what made it motivated you to be an actor? Mm, watching a lot of movies, you know, seeing the gangster stuff around me coming up, so that motivated motivate me. At least I can do something. If I can do something gangster, I can get paid for it. I ain't got to go to jail for it. So that really what motivated me. What about you, Justin? The money, of traveling, being, uh, being with my folk, just doing the right thing, the legal way, getting money the legal way, and just having fun at it while I'm doing it. Gotcha. How do you guys feel about COVID-19? It's fucked up. It killed half of America. But she just got to pray and just go on about your day. Can't let the word stretch out their life. What about you, Justin? Like a 50-50. Have bad, have good. Some people came up, got some money. Have people lost their loved one, but at the end of the day, God know what he was doing. All right, bet. Thank you guys for chatting with me today. All right. All right. So tell me your name. Fred Witt. Mr. Fred, Fred. Witt, how old are you? 17, now. Nah. What city and state are you from? See, I'm Alabama. So growing up in uh, Selma, where'd you go to school? I went to uh, I went to all the city school, but now I'm at Selma High. Okay, you a senior at Selma High? Yeah, in my last year. Okay, gotcha. So you played in the movie Gangsta uh, Retaliation, right? Yeah. So tell me, what your thoughts about that movie, and how do you feel about that movie? I ain't gonna care. I fuck with it. I feel the shit that. They, they were playing in the mood, like, I know it's some real shit. He ain't just no makeup. Gotcha. So what motivated you to be an actor, Mr. Fred? Everybody be rapping and stuff. I don't want to rap. They be capping and stuff. I'd rather just play in the mood, start a whole different way. Gotcha. What are your future plans after high school? Uh, think about getting my CDL. See what that movie stuff talking about, but I really just want some money for real. I ain't fooling with that school stuff. It's school stuff ain't it. Gotcha. How do you feel about growing up in Selma? I ain't gonna care. It taught me to be a man, cause I'd be lost if I went here. A whole hey. lot of sneaky stuff going on. You gotta watch who you be around though. Right, right. All right, so tell me, how you feel about COVID-19? What's your thoughts about that? It's been about a year since we've been going through it, so what's your thoughts? It ain't fate to me. I believe it's fate. They just putting that name over another disease that been here. Gotcha. All right, well, appreciate you chatting with us today. All right. So tell me your name, sir. Hold on, hold on. They call me t -Rave. All right, and how old are you? 29. All right, 29. So what's your real name? Terry Young. Tyrion, Tyrion, gotcha. So where were you born and raised, Mr. Tyrion? I was born in Selma, Selma, Alabama. Raised here all my life, though. All my life. Been here all my life. Yeah. Gotcha. So you played in the movie Gangster Retaliation, right? Yeah. Yes, sir. <laughs> so tell me how you feel about that. I like the movie, though. It's based on true shit, though. Like, for real, for real. But you know how we rock it. Can't talk about it. But uh, it, um, it made me realize a lot, though. Like, your past and catch up with you, you feel me? And in the movie, like, if you look for an instant, no matter what you do, no matter how you do it, it's gonna catch up with you, yeah. 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 So tell me, Mr. Terry Young, what motivated you to be an actor? Man, I'm just funny anyway, you feel me? Like, everybody been telling me all my life, like, where you funny here? Yeah. Well, I don't be playing, but it's just how I rock, you know? I just like to make people laugh good-hearted. So I was like, hey, Let's try it one time and see how far I go. Yeah. So you born and raised in Selma? Yes, sir. How you feel about growing up in Selma? What was your childhood like? Childhood, it was all right. Talking about how to be a man, though. Like, growing up out here in Selma, you ain't gonna have no feeling too tough. You'll see people die at your age, you know what I'm saying? You'll, you'll just, your vibe and your heart, like, it's gonna change so fast. You ain't gonna know how to, you know, love and all that. Feel them, like, that's how it be. I still want to how it is. You got to grow and be a man fast. Can't play it out, nothing like that. And we lost out here. Yeah. yeah. So, how do you feel about COVID-19? You know, we've been going on for about a year now. What are your thoughts about COVID-19? Hey, COVID-19, what? It took a lot of people that they say. 
You never know. This thing could be a myth. It's a government thing. So, I, hey, with me, just stay safe. Sometimes, keep mad, so I just stay safe. I know a lot of people pay, but that's just what goes on. I don't really, I don't really dwell on it. Yeah. Not too tough. The people die every day, I don't dwell on it. I don't try to think I'm too tough. Tell me your name, sir. Uh, my name, KD. They call me Wode around here. Gotcha. What's your real name? Uh, Monkira Alexander. All right. So, Mr. KD, how old are you? I'm 41. All right. I hear you, OG, KD. What city and state are you from, Mr. KD? Well, I'm from Selma, but uh, when I was born, a week after I was born, we went to Chicago. But I was up there to about six, seven, and came back. Gotcha. So you in the movie Gangster Retaliation? Yeah. Gotcha. So tell me how you feel about that movie. Oh, yeah, man. Real shit, man. Real shit. So what motivated you to be an actor, Mr. KD? Well, I, I always wanted to be an actor, you know? I do music anyway. I'm a rapper. I act. I do it all. I want to get that money, man. Get known, put out the... Yeah. So you're trying to get that money, man. Oh, yeah. So you related to Money Man, I hear. Yeah, that's my first cousin. That's my cousin. Gotcha, gotcha. So how do you feel about growing up in Selma? Man, Selma. Selma, Selma. <laughs> oh, slow Selma. I love it here, though. This home. This home. They slow. <laughs> you know? Gotcha. So tell me, Mr. KD, what's your thoughts about COVID-19? Man, shit, that shit crazy, man. Crazy how that shit happened. The world, to see how this shit happened, this shit crazy. The hell? It's crazy. So tell me your name, sir. Man, my name is John. But around here they call me John B, you know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So how old are you, Mr. John B? Uh, shit, actually, man, my birthday was like March 11th, and I just turned 25. Bet, yeah, bet. So Happy I'm still birthday. celebrating a little bit. Gotcha. Happy birthday to you. So what city and state are you from, Mr. John B? Uh, shit, I'm from Selma, Selma, Alabama. Bet. Did you go to school in Selma? Yeah, uh, but like down here, they got us separated, you know what I'm saying? Like on the south side, they call our shit the Daly County shit, you feel? So I went to the south side though, you feel? Gotcha. So you'll be uh, acting in this movie that we were shooting today. So what motivated you to want to become an actor? Well, shit, <laughs> I ain't never been in no movie, you know what I'm saying? Who go really pass some shit up like that? And then when like they got to tell me about it, like, I ain't an actor, but me playing the move on feel like no actor because this shit, we live every day. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. So how do you feel about growing up in Selma, Mr. John B? <laughs> I mean, shit. I feel like it hard to explain, but I'm going to try to break it down to you. Like, I'm glad to be raised in Selma because, I mean, on the way I am now, you feel me? If if you were born in Selma, I feel like you can make it anywhere. You feel me? Mm. Yeah. So we know we've been, you know, going through this pandemic about a year now. So tell me, what's your thoughts about COVID nineteen? See, man. <laughs> I mean, like, man, like, I think the shit about with. Me. If you ask me, I don't really think it's no viral. I think there's some shit they created, not people. I feel me, but like. Everybody I know that died from it, died in the hot pool. And that ain't, there's something crazy that don't make you want it, you know? Yeah. All right, Mr. John B., we appreciate you for coming by and chatting with us today. All right, bro. So what's your name, sir? Quan Terrence Deshaun Solo. All right, what's your nickname? They call me Deshaun. Sean? Yeah. All right, Sean. Mr. Sean, how old are you? 24. 24 years old. Were you born and raised in Selma? Well, I was born in Detroit, but uh, I came down. I moved down here when I was about five. Then she, uh, you know. Gotcha. Then down here up to 24. You know. Gotcha. So the movie that we're shooting today, Devil in Disguise, that's going to be your first movie shooting. So tell me how do you feel about shooting your first movie? 
Uh, you know, I'm kind of decided, you know. You know, you don't get too many opportunities like that, you know. <laughs> right. You know, I'm here to support my own cuz. Right. Oh, yeah. So who motivated you to want to be in this movie and become an actor? Uh, I mean, they told me about they were shooting the movie, and I said, you know, fuck it, I'll do it. And, um, bed. I'll let him go. I'll let him bed, my girl, you know. So I just say, I get up, you know, I go ahead and, you know, and try that thing out, you know. I feel you. Hey, I took drama class in school, though. Okay, okay. Yeah. Good deal. Hey, so, yeah. so tell me how you feel about uh, growing up in Selma, Sean. <sighs> Uh, Selma cool. It's all right. Ain't bad. I like it. Gotcha. Slow. So Corona's been around for about a year now. Tell me what's your thoughts about the coronavirus and pandemic, nah, the COVID-19 and the pandemic. Uh, I mean, it kept a lot of people, but, uh, you just gotta keep your immune system up. As long as you keep your immune system up, you know, shit. Can't have too much effect, you know. Oh, well, I do. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. We appreciate you coming back for chatting with us today, Sean. Okay, man. So what's your name, sir? Pat P. Can I get your real name, Mr. Pat P? Patrick Prevo. Gotcha. Are you related to Mr. James Prevo? Yes, sir. That's my brother. All right. And how old are you, Mr. Prevo? 40 years old. 40 years old. So that's your big brother? Yes, sir. Gotcha. Where were you born and raised, Mr. Prevo? Selma, Alabama. So what was life like growing up for you in Selma? Growing up in Selma? Uh, back in my day growing up in Selma, it wasn't all that bad. Selma was a beautiful city. It was a lot going on in Selma. You know, a lot of uh, jobs, a lot of businesses were booming. You know, it had something to do. Everybody had something to do. You know, the crime was low. We no, we no high crime rate, you know, and uh, pretty much, man, you know, everybody was family back then. You know, every neighborhood, you know, pretty much was everybody, you know, brother and sister, mama, daddy, you know what I'm saying? You get in trouble, your mom, you know, by the time you get home, your parents already know about it. That's the era I grew in, you know what I'm saying? It was okay to get your ass whooped down the street from the neighbor if they saw you doing something you had no business, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, life back there, it was good. You know, but at the end of the day, you know, every good has, has its, its bad parts too. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I grew up in an era where, you know, the drugs and the, you know, gang banging era, you know what I'm saying, was going pretty hard back then. You know what I'm saying? And, and I was one that was influenced by it. Gotcha. You know, I got caught up in, you know, the gang banging and, you know, messing with the drugs or whatever, you know what I'm saying? And, um, that's what, mo that's what I was motivated by, you know what I mean? I, I grew up around that all my life, you know what I'm saying? And like it was passed down, you know? So I took the torch and I did my part. Um, you know, growing up in the life, of, in the streets of Selma, getting shot well, at the age of 15, you know, being someone ain't had no business, you know, at the club with the grown folk, you know? Uh, got put in some situations trying to be a uh, lawyer to somebody that ain't had no business following. But however, you know, every situation that I go through, I learn from it. Um, I try to, you know, make the best decisions I can, you know, and moving on, you know, just uh, growing up, man, selling drugs, <laughs> you know, uh, plenty of women, I done did it, man. You know what I'm saying? The, the whole street life, you know, uh, the violence, you know, I done did it, you know, uh, all the way up to the point where, you know, I guess you can say your past started to catch up with you, and it's funny how it catch up, catches up with you, you know what I'm saying? And uh, I got put in a situation uh, where I caught uh, a murder case, where well, I was involved in a murder case. You know, I'm not going to uh, go too in depth with it. You know, people that know me are uh, very familiar you know, with the situation or whatever, but that was a negative situation that made me the positive person that I am today. And that makes me strive, you know, every day to be a better person. 
because that situation, you know, I went um, to state prison for uh, 11 years. And that's pretty much where I grew up at. You know, I was 18 when I left the street. So you can see, you know, I grew up pretty fast on the era that I was out there. And, you know, going to prison at 18 years old, you know, I was still uh, pretty much a boy. You know, I became a man in prison. That's when I understood, you know, what it meant to be a man. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, that negative situation could have drove me to be more negative or it could have, you know, put me in a situation where, you know what, I can take advantage of this free education, you know what I'm saying, that you can get in the prison system by, you know, educating yourself, get your GED if you ain't have no uh, high school diploma. And I was one that didn't have a high school diploma. So I took advantage of getting my GED. Got that, I tutored for a while, went and got a trade, uh, trading skill, got that, what's next? You know, I started taking a lot of therapeutic programs, you know, drug treatment programs, you know, and not that I had a drug problem or anything like that, but I mean, I've been around it all my life. So I get to hear the stories of people who actually, you know, was affected by it more than I was. You know, so just learning from other people's stories by just listening and putting myself in their shoes and trying to, you know, feel what they felt, you know what I'm saying? And because I tell people all the time, like, a lot of mistakes that we make don't have to be made if we just watch people because those mistakes already been made before. So you don't have to make them. If you're paying attention, you don't have to make the same mistakes that I make or you make. Make better decisions, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I grew up, man, you know, uh, I got more in tune with my spiritual side. Um, you know, learning who I was as a man and, and understanding who I wanted to be, who I was destined to be, getting in contact with God, making that connection. And once I made that connection with God, everything paved away. You know what I'm saying? I did my part. God's always in the blessing business. But our blessings come with sacrifice. So God expects us to do our part as well. Nothing just gonna fall out the sky. I never seen but the rain. You know what I'm saying? So you know, but I did my part, and that part was simply growing up, becoming a man, understanding who I was, making that connection with God, you know, becoming uh, uh, in tune with my spiritual man, you know, and, and becoming more positive, you know what I'm saying, and a more of a positive role model and a figure to those who are going to look up to me. Gotcha. You know, because I know that, you know, there's a lot of people look up to me, you know, or used to look up to me and want to be, you know, and do the things that they saw me doing. And I would encourage them all the time because I had them approach me, you know what I'm saying, me getting out of prison. Man, I remember, man, hearing so much about you, I want to be like you. No, you don't want to be like me. I just got out of prison. Why you want to be like me? Make better just make better choices. Gotcha. You know, and then, you know, to my young brothers that's out here that's really doing good deeds, you know, that I see that had a chance to be out in the streets but chose to go to work you know, and, 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 and never got in any trouble. I salute them brothers, those, bro those are the brothers that motivate me. I ain't motivated by the guys who are out here in the streets. You know what I'm saying? I grew up in the streets. I done seen the streets all my life. I am the street, but guess what though? The streets led me somewhere that I ain't wanna be. You know what I'm saying? So I was forced to grow up in a fucked up environment, very fucked up environment. But guess what though? I chose to make that environment for me and my world positive. You know what I'm saying? By recreating myself and bringing out the God in me. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and that, that made me who I am. I came home, I got two beautiful daughters. You know what I'm saying? I've been, you know, blessed on some great jobs. You know what I'm saying? Doing electrical work. You know, I did welding for a minute. You know, something that I really didn't care about at the time. I had a lot going on, so, you know, I was introduced to electrical and, and took off with it. And that's what I enjoy doing, that's what I like. You know what I'm saying? And when I'm not working or whatever, I, I enjoy spending time with my two beautiful daughters, you know, and, and, and just being a father. You know that's what I'm saying? That's the most beautiful blessing that God gave me, and I feel like that is what keeps me motivated and driven to continue to grow and be the man that I'm destined to be. You know, I ain't through growing yet. You know, I'm still growing, I'm still learning, you know? So, gotcha. but yeah. All right. We well, appreciate you for coming in and chatting with us today on today, Mr. Prevo. No problem, no problem. I appreciate y'all for having me.